Can you hear me? Yeah, can you hear me? What's up, dude? Wait, I can't hear you. You can't hear me? No, no. Uh, can you hear me now? Dr. Hamza Gaj. So while you're figuring out your, your audio, that's all good. At M-O-G-A-J, right? Let me just double check that one. Yeah, M-O-G-A-J. That's your Instagram. Yeah. Can I hear you? Yeah, can you hear me? Dude, what's up with the audio? Hold on. I don't know. You want to try signing out, signing back in? That might work. Yeah, hold on. Can you hear me? There we go. I hear you. Whoa, we see, I see three now. Three? It looks like you're... Oh, there we go. There we go. The other one just signed out. And now you're cool. off. Dude, thanks for coming on today. How you doing? Good, man. How have you been? Good. Good. Long day. Long day. Yeah. But, dude, I'm so glad we get to catch up. This is... I know. It's been long due. Yeah, man. You're going out the beer. Look at you. Yeah, I just haven't had any time to do anything, honestly. So I got back from the trip, and then one of my friends is here. So I was just hosting him for the last week or so. So finally got some downtime. He, he left? Or she left? Yeah. Yeah. No, he left. Uh, he was here for South by Southwest. So we were just doing stuff during that time. Oh, but, uh, right. Yeah, I'm bummed I miss you. Yeah, uh, one of my friends works at South by, so she got me a Platinum Pass. So we were able to go to a couple of events. Wow. A yeah. Platinum Pass? What, what, is that? what does that mean? It's just a pass that lets you get into like pretty much all their events, which is nice. So there's South by is like a week long. It has yeah. music, yeah. movies, educational, CE stuff. So you can go to like pretty much anything based on that. You just have to kind of plan it out. So uh, we just went to a couple of events like during the week. And uh, yeah, my friend just wanted to come and kind of catch up during that time. So I haven't really had any downtime since the mission trip and now this. So this is finally like... The last thing I'm going to do before I just kind of like hibernate for a bit. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. South by South, what? That's like a isn't that a big like marketing event? Yeah, I mean it's a mix of a lot of things, but the whole point of it is just basically people sharing their ideas and creative things. So there's movie premieres, there's people releasing their albums, there's uh, educators coming to teach conferences. So it's just like a big platform for people to share their intellectual property, basically. Oh, shoot. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. That's I know cool. Vaynerchuk, the entrepreneur business dude. He, uh, he's, yeah. he talked about South by South. Is that always in Austin? Yeah. It's a, you get to see stuff like that that you never usually come across, especially in our field, you know? That's awesome. Yeah. But, what, um, what was your favorite? Did you, you, so you went, like, what was your favorite? Who, like, really kind of stood out to you? Well, this year I didn't do a lot of educational uh, events just because those are typically the first couple of days, and I was still in the Dominican. So when I came down, it was when the movies and musics were starting. So, I mean, the most memorable thing was I went to go see some uh, artists during the whole event. So I went to go see Hermanos Gutierrez, which are, like, uh, two brothers who, like, just play incredible acoustics on the guitar but last year actually my friend ali who's also a figs ambassador she's an obgyn she became a big influencer tiktok like you know million subscriber person wow. and she got invited to do a talk for south by southwest so she got us passes to come see her and uh that was really cool because she talked about women's health and you know like educating uh women about you know, pregnancy and stuff like that. So it was really cool because she started on the platform, she got famous, and now she's doing like speaking events at South by Southwest. So it was pretty incredible how you can kind of get to that level just through social media. That's awesome. That really yeah. is. <clears throat> yeah. It's a, there was a lot of events actually that were social media related, like people who were either, you know, small YouTube stars that are now giving major interviews with like big speakers down to just like healthcare providers that now work with big companies like Apple. And now they're giving talks about how they kind of develop that partnership and stuff. So it's pretty incredible to see stuff like that. Right. Right. Hopefully yeah, we get there one day, man. We'll get yeah. There. I mean, you're on the way there. So I'm excited to see your growth. Oh, stop. 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 <laughs> Dude, you got a sweet flat there. Thanks, man. Yeah. It's my, uh, my little man cave. I got my record player here. And yeah. uh, this is my podcast, Mike. So this is usually where I do the solo episodes. And right, then uh, right. a couple books. And yeah, this is my little little cozy spot. I hate to make you get up, but can like can I and like whoever's going to watch this on YouTube later, can we see the wall? This is gorgeous. It's That's just a couple of the things I love. You know, Harry Styles, can. Daft Punk, mm -hmm. Mac DeMarco. Harry Styles, yes. Vampire Weekend and just a couple of my favorite books up there, which I... I have read, believe it or not. So they're not they're not just decorative pieces. Number one favorite book. What's the, if you were to recommend one book of all time, your number one favorite, what would it be? 
That's pretty tough, man. But I would say the one book that I actually read, like I'm not a big multiple times reading book guy. Like there's some people that read books like five or six times. I can't do that. I could do movies like that. But mm. uh, the one book that I've listened to twice is Matthew McConaughey's Green Lights. Um, mm. Yeah, it's a really good book. You wouldn't, I mean, you wouldn't really think it, but he's just a really great, um, his perspective on life is pretty great. I think uh, just for how he got to where he is in life. Plus he's, you know, he's from Austin uh, or he's not from Austin, but he's a local Austin favorite. And uh, his story is pretty incredible. His perspective on life is incredible. I, I really love his perspective on love and relationships too. And his mm. his love for his wife and the way he like approaches family and family values. So I would highly recommend it. I think it's a great book. He's he's definitely a, a great orator too. So if you want to listen to the audible version, you know, the way Matthew McConaughey talks, he could talk about anything and it's like interesting somehow. So right. would highly recommend it. <clears throat> yeah, he's a great speaker, great public speaker, great communicator. A leader. Yeah, he's a he's a businessman. Like he's definitely uh, grown successful outside of Hollywood in different ways. Like in Austin, oh, yeah. he's invested in Austin FC. You know, he's a uh, he works for the university system here, and he's like has his own like class and course. And now he's like I think he's a university. Uh, like he's a figurehead and does stuff for the actual uh, uh, community and whatnot. So it's pretty cool. Wow. I didn't realize yeah. that. I didn't know that he was working at the university. I see him going, you know, they, they show those clips of him at the football games and stuff. Yeah, he's a big Longhorn. Uh, I mean, I'm a Longhorn, so there's a big uh, just mutual respect on that front. <laughs> so, all of the Longhorns. Yeah, man. Everyone's got a but, Longhorn here or there. Yeah, dude. They're uh, legends. But, yeah. Um, yeah, but uh, well, how's how's everything going on your end? You doing okay? In there, you know. Yeah. Uh, I just got back from well, well, Austin. We'll go into that, but I just got back on <clears> service, so now I'm on oral surgery for until I graduate, so a year and three, four months, and then That's crazy, I'm done, and it, it's all oral surgery now. I just got back off of like a quick anesthesia rotation, ED, um, and then SICU. That's the surgical ICU. Yeah, how are you feeling about that? I'm glad it's over. I'm glad it's over. Yeah. And now, and I mean. Being back on service, we got like today was a 12, 13 hour day. And yeah, it's, you it's just still look like, good, man. It doesn't look like you've aged 20 years like most uh, surgery <laughs> residents. So it looks like you're feel, doing man. okay. <laughs> yeah, man. I respect <laughs> you guys. I honestly, I, I don't know how you guys do it sometimes. So major respect on my end. Thank you. Thank you. I, I don't know either, man. I'm just hanging on for dear life, trying to survive through it. But uh, that's awesome, man. Hopefully, I want to graduate. And really just hone in on what I want to do. I don't want to do yeah. any of this stuff, any of that stuff. I want to do any of this for the hospital. I want to yeah. work just for patients, just doing what I like and yeah. actually have some time for family and friends, raising a family one day. That's, you know, we got to like take yeah, a you gotta make time for personal life. Right. You know, the chapter doesn't come to you. You got to start writing. Yeah. So that's kind of how oh, I I'm missed you in Austin. What were you in Austin for? Yeah. So I was there, uh, what was that? Two, two, three, Two or three Probably weekends two weeks ago. ago now, yeah. Yeah, that was uh, a bachelor weekend for okay. my boy Joe Fapal. He's uh, my girlfriend's sister's fiance, and okay. first time in Austin. You got a nice, nice city there. Yeah, man, it's fun. I'm bummed I missed you, but now you just have another reason to visit again. I have to come True. visit you over there. So. True. Yeah. 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 You know, I I loved Austin. You got West yeah. Six. You got Dirty Six. You got East Six. That yeah. was. Honestly, it probably would have been hard to see you as much because you were at a bachelor's thing. But at least next time, if you come, I can give you like a real tour of Austin. Yeah, I would love so, that. We did yeah, a, a brewery tour one day. We took a, a boat on on the river, went on, jumped in the river and stuff. I was yeah, I was pretty pretty excited to see what what Austin had to offer. But dude, a lot of homeless. What's uh, yeah? Um, it's it's yeah, it's it's kind of like similar to San Francisco in that capacity. It's not as bad, but <laughs> Um, yeah, you do see it and there's, there's no like specific section. You'll see it everywhere. Like there's, there's like just bubbles of them everywhere. So, uh, yeah, it's pretty unfortunate, but, um, just, yeah, just South to sixth, it was like an alleyway where it's just yeah. like, I, I probably wouldn't walk down that, you know? Yeah. It yeah. Just... It's, it's interesting. Yeah. Cause the safety I would say in Austin is not too bad, but I feel like a lot of the homeless too move here from other cities and I'm not sure what the specific reason is, but I do know that like a lot of the homeless people that I've even talked to have moved here from like 
California or like New York, like it's, you know, it's like a known thing to come here maybe because it's easier to find places to be at or uh, whatnot. Yeah, that's, I, I gotta say you're right though. I mean, I, especially in the middle of the night walking yeah. down six, they were like just on the corner, like 20 cops. And I was like, you know what? Great. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I think they, they do a good job of at least trying Cause it's also a college town. So there's a lot of kids here. There's a lot of, mm -hmm. uh, younger uh groups so they try to be a little bit more cognizant of that um but yeah i mean it's it's unfortunate i i feel like i do feel bad for the homeless too here because i think a lot of them just came up across bad circumstances and um you know i i think there's a unhealthy stigma against them but a lot of these people are just you know unfortunate results of like the system too so yeah uh, it's sad to see it that's for sure and it's <clears throat> not too much better here in new york now either but you know yeah. on a brighter note i i think uh we're gonna be hopeful for the future right yeah so man, for sure i've seen a lot of positivity coming from you on, on instagram which i really appreciate i really yeah, like man. to see positivity dude thanks yeah. dude. i uh yeah i i think that wasn't something that was always there yeah i i had a lot of negativity probably before covid and during covid um and it's just one of those things where you just kind of realize you know the more negativity you put out there the more you'll get back and it's just a vicious cycle and it's kind of the opposite with positivity right like the more positivity you put out or just like good news and things like that yeah you'll get negative people and negative responses but they're going to get tired of it eventually because they're like i'm not it's not getting to this guy. Like he just keeps putting more positive stuff. And I think for me, it's also just a way to kind of reflect on my own personality to just try to be a better person if I can. And the only way I can do it is by putting it out there and it puts the impetus on me to kind of stand behind that. And uh, it's kind of like an accountability thing too. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah, I mean, there's so much shitty stuff going on in the world right now so like the last thing people need is to go on social media and then like see me sharing more shitty more. stuff so yeah i mean from any stuff from anyone yeah yeah so it's hard to avoid that stuff and you and i both know like working in our profession we come across negativity all the time whether it's with patients being unhappy or stressed in our school system and debt and all this other stuff so yeah. if i can nitpick all like the positive and good stuff about it and just share that like I mean, it's it's unrealistic to an extent for some people because obviously they're I'm like avoiding the other negative stuff. But for the most part, we already are aware of it. Like I don't need to repeat or echo chamber the yeah. bad stuff. There's no point in that. So yeah, I mean, hopefully none of my stuff comes off as like superficial or, you know, fake. Like I, I try to be genuine about the stuff I'm sharing and I, I appreciate it because as a result of that, I've had such amazing people come into my life, such as yourself, you know, like being able to have friends that promote you constantly and push you to do better and do more and i think having friends like you is amazing because the more i see you succeeding the more it exp inspires me now to succeed and be like oh shit he's doing a podcast now he's doing this and instead of being like talking shit or hating on it it's more like oh like i i gotta start getting my shit together and doing that too now and like you will as a result be like dude i love your podcast i love your setup and like yeah it's just like a echo chamber of like promoting each other and i think that's the way to do it because there's room for everyone to do this stuff and it's so fun to yeah. do it and like for me to be on your podcast and like i said i can't wait to have you online um just because we get to share perspectives that a lot of our listeners and viewers don't get a chance to listen to and then to hear that back from them is always amazing and hear like how you might have touched one out of 500 listeners is like more than enough for me so yeah. That's true, man. And dude, I mean, and you're doing the podcast. Look, isn't it like therapy? I gotta, I gotta say this. Like yeah, something about podcasting, it's like we get to connect, we get to talk, we get to talk about, we get, we can talk about this trash, we can talk about like the positivity. Positivity yeah. is huge this year too. I gotta say, but yeah, man, we get we get to chat a little bit. That's great, and, and I really appreciate what you said. You know, it's it's motivating. Um, yeah, it's motivating all around. You know, it, yeah, I, I, I love your perspective on things. I think <clears throat> I will admit, you know, like you being in oral surgery, unfortunately, oral surgeons don't have the best reputation sometimes with like personality or like being kind and stuff, which I understand. I think in your field, it's a very demanding field. It's a very challenging field. So you guys have a right to be a little bit more kind of stern and straightforward and brutally honest. And I to disagree. be, you disagree with that? I yeah. I mean, <laughs> I, I do. 
And it's really I, all for me on a daily basis because I got to be surrounded by some people that – Yeah. Like, the ego is – like the roof yeah. stops here. Why is the ego – and, you know, I like to get everyone involved. Let's talk about this together. Let's communicate. Let's come up with a treatment process. <clears throat> I, I mean, I could go on, but, but yeah, I, didn't no, mean, it's, yeah, I didn't mean. No, it's, it's good. I'm glad you have that perspective. And I think it's getting better over time. But, you know, when I was in dental school, it wasn't uncommon for me to hear like, oh, like the oral surgeon cussed out the student or did this or that, right? Because it's like, kind of like, it was just kind of a known thing. And you're like, well, yeah, you were in oral surgery. What'd you expect? And to be fair, like, my favorite professor in dental school or my favorite mentor slash teacher was my Russian oral surgeon. One of the most incredible mentors I've had. I still talk to her. I actually just texted her last week and like, she was a hard person to be under. Like, I mean, you fuck up and yeah, she will destroy it. She's Russian. So like, you know, she was a trust, but verified person, like doesn't take any shit like Soviet level strictness. And I loved it because I think I, I, yeah, she had an accent and she's such a great person. Her name is Dr. Swan. And I feel like I earned her love and trust. Like, you know, it's like one of those friendships where you know that you, you earned that relationship. Like it wasn't just handed out. And I think that was great about that relationship, but it it is kind of unfortunate that it's like, that's kind of like what you expect with oral surgeons and all that. So it's great that you're kind of promoting the positivity on your end too. And giving that, because as a dentist, I can tell you ego is more than common in our side too. Like I've worked, unfortunately, for historically, almost every dentist I work for has unfortunately had ego that's caused me to leave the practice or Mm -hmm. decide to go do my own thing. Uh, And I wouldn't say I'm, I I hopefully don't think I'm tough to work with. I do feel like I have a very strong personality and knowing like what I like to do, what I love, like who I am as a person. I'm very like, obviously you can see like, I'm I'm very like self-aware of my personality and I don't really like mold into expectation sometimes and in dentistry there's a lot of ego especially with associates and the way some owners treat associates that's unfortunate where it's like my way or the highway and it really Mm -hmm. sucks because it's caused me to really like have challenges you know finding my place in dentistry because it's a lot of clashing of egos and it's not in the way where i'm like oh i'm better than you it's more just like hey like i wish you could kind of like take my advice or listen to like what i have to say input wise but because i'm an associate my value to the practice or input is not as, you know, uh, Valuable not as important. Yeah. Yeah. And it sucks. And it, it, there's been times where ego has factored into like what patients I can see or like how much to get paid on something. And it, it really sucks. So, you know, this has led me to like want to go down the path of ownership myself. I hate that it's taking me this long, but I also think it's all part of the life lessons you get, you know, like wow. ultimately. I know that when I'm an owner and I have an associate now, I, I know hopefully the things I've learned along the way I can like avoid doing to whoever I have working for me ultimately. And so, yeah, I mean, uh, I feel like we just kind of was a long winded answer, but yeah, I think ego is very high in our profession and I'm hoping that as our years go by, like people are starting to be a little bit more cognizant of it and better at it. I think our generation is, you know, taking therapy into account and a lot of like self-awareness into account to be better, not only better healthcare providers, but better people too, like with our staff and everything. So, yeah. hundred percent. Did you buy a practice yet or you're in the process? No, no. Um, I'm, so I'm working for, I'm working for someone right now. Uh, so I'm working towards a partnership and if that doesn't go, then, uh, ownership is the next step, but, uh, definitely stepping away from associateship in the next year or two. So yeah. um, that's the main goal for me is like, you know, I did the associateship in hopes of taking a slower path so I could learn it kind of for me, associateship was like a, a pro residency, uh, where I was just kind of like learning everything I felt like I missed out in dental school or everything after dental school and trying to get like additional uh, knowledge. Cause I'm the type of person where I don't like to jump into things until like I'm fully ready, which is also a downside. Sometimes you just got to take a leap of faith. Yeah. But I, I felt like there was a lot of things I really wanted to hone down on where, whether it was like the business aspect, the marketing, uh, the little stuff that we don't learn in dental school. And now I feel like I've kind of gained that confidence and I'm ready to do it. But I really value mentorship too. And I really wanted to learn from these people I was working under. And even though I butted heads and had some issues, I did learn a lot from all of them, whether it was like, you know, firsthand or secondhand. Um, So yeah, going forward now, I I can confidently say I can do the next step, which is ownership or uh, partnership without kind of having any uh, regrets. 
Dude, I really think you need to kind of be captain of your own ship. I really do. I mean, yeah. you need to have your own setup. You need to have your own office. I feel like you're the kind of person where you need to you need to run your own show. And I think you're going to do a great job at it such that it's your show and you can run it. Or even if Thanks, you could man. run your show in another office. But like you said, yeah. that's their office now. They want it run their way. Yeah, I Did agree. You, and I... I you know? um creatively too like you know me like i love i love creating things and making things kind of like my personality and you know like even i keep you know showing this back but it's like yeah like everything that i own or that i live in has a touch of my personality in it and i i don't feel comfortable in a lot of these offices because it doesn't feel like it's mine right like i don't see any of the art that i love i don't see any of the aesthetics that i love which <clears throat> it's, it sounds ridiculous to some people maybe but aesthetics plays a big role in our in our profession because when people walk into an office sometimes they can walk into a really pretty office and have an awful dentist but they'll stay there because that office has vibes right like it makes yeah. them feel better it makes them feel comfortable or vice versa like you could have a really amazing dentist but if you have a shitty office people won't want to go there because they can't take selfies in there they can't like feel comfortable it has like a scary kind of uh vibe to it and people right. don't like hospital setting type places so for me that's another thing is like i really value aesthetics and the the look and feel of a place and um so i'm hoping that that that's also something i can bring with me to my practice and yeah i'm excited for it i think that's going to be another creative com component that i can really like put a lot of my love and passion into oh yeah oh yeah do you yeah this, this potential partnership or do they have a creative yeah. side too? Or do you think you could kind of just take over the design, the architecture, the layout, the vibe? Um, you you got to own that vibe. That can't be someone else. You know what I mean? Yeah. He You're has his own vibe everything. to it. But yeah, yeah, I think that's why, like, ultimately, if I decide to go my own route, I'll bring my own thing into it. But yeah, for now, I think uh, I'm just kind of like learning as much as I can and getting as much insight. He does a lot of implant and all in forward dentistry. And oh. so the surger, he's a big surgical guy. And so I'm learning a lot in that regard. And I think that's kind of like what this is to me. It's like a surgical residency that I'm doing where I'm just learning, you know, how to flap well, how to do sutures well, how to do all in fours and kind of go through the, the process from start to end because we have an in-house lab. So I think that's like my favorite aspect of this part is, you know, whether or not I go into partnership with him, I'm going to walk away having a lot of uh, just knowledge that i learned you know outside of ce courses oh, yeah. so Interesting. i'm very grateful for that definitely Men you've got to have mentorship yeah. i can't harp on mentorship enough i mean ultimately when you kind of feel everyone feels lost here and there along the way whether it be your career whether it be love life whether it be just the day-to-day -day, you know and it's really yeah. good to get a mentor that you're like i want to be where that guy or girl is you know yeah i have no qualms with with asking it like i feel like a lot of people have this kind of like hesitancy of like oh i don't want to like bother him or say this but like yeah i i would say on hand right now i have like eight mentors and that's just adding up over time and like literally like i'll just walk up to a guy that i really love and respect and i'll be like hey do you mind if i like just like use you as a mentor and like learn from you and i've had zero hesitation to do it i'm not shy to do it if anything i feel like it's it's the highest compliment i can give somebody and you know i've had some say like oh no like i see you as a peer and not my mentee uh, like Ro robin bethel like he's somebody i like hold to the highest regard as a dentist uh, he's actually he was on my podcast if you guys want to listen incredible mm. dentist and uh he owns six plus practices in austin just amazing guy he's in invisalign like uh, master like people yeah. in the Invisalign world definitely know him and yeah when I first moved to Austin I clicked with him immediately and I consider him a mentor but he holds me in such high regard that he considers me a peer and will not accept me as hmm. a mentee which is very kind of him and very like accommodating for him to like hold me in that regard but you know like that being said i still secretly hold him as a mentor and he won't ever admit <laughs> it but i think it's it's like important to have people like that because like i said with you like having people in your circle that you really look up to admire um and you see being so successful it just whether it's consciously or subconsciously inspires you it makes you just want to do more and be better right like you have the comparison syndrome in a healthy way i would say like where you're just yeah. like I need to, you know, I can't be sitting on this couch all day because there are people out there doing amazing stuff with their life. Like I need to like, you know, do something productive and cool. And uh, that's how I see it. Like, I don't ever see it as like, uh, oh, like why is like he's doing so much like I got to be better than him. It's like, no, like I want to be as good as him. Um, and so that way, when I talk to him, like I feel like 
we can share stuff together and I'm not just like stealing information from someone. Right. Um, it's always so, about yeah. better than what you were doing yesterday, right? It's yeah. always, you know, it's so interesting. I had a question for you speaking about that. What happened? Have you ever found yourself in this situation? I've found myself in this situation here, there where you're locked in into a period of your life. Say it's dental school, say it's college, maybe right. it's residency. Maybe it's, you just started in this practice and after nine months, you find yourself where you're surrounded by people above you, right? So you're locked into a practice. And I know you, you definitely experienced this in, in, in some time or another. And you look around, and you're like, I don't see mentors here. Or at least like, I don't have a mentor on a daily basis here. And now it's like yeah. you're going in for months at a time. And it's like, you know, I don't really want to be like Stephanie. Or I don't really want to do what George does, you know? Yeah. And it's like, you kind of find yourself trapped in, in a box. What do you yeah. do? I leave. I, and I did. I, I've left offices because of that. And I've had no hesitation about it. And I think I've done it so much now that I've not had hesitations anymore when I do feel that way. For instance, you know, just last year, I left an office because I was not feeling like I was growing. I felt like I was stagnant. I felt like I was losing a lot. Like I, like I felt like every time I was going in that office, there was something missing inside of me, like that fire mm -hmm. and that drive. Exactly. Um, and I, I, I left. I had no backup plan. I had no um, next step. I just kind of just left. And I was like, okay, well, I guess I'm not working for a couple of weeks or months or whatever. But I had like, thankfully, like, you know, like a, a safety net and whatnot, which is yeah. like something I'm grateful for. And not a lot of people have that. So I don't take that for granted. But <clears throat> I still think like anyone in that situation should consider like whether they would rather just like go through that nine to five or eight, whatever, eight to four feeling like you're just like losing seconds of your life versus just like getting out and maybe you'll lose money for a couple of days or whatever, but you're going to be able to like move on to the next stage of your life. And yeah, so I, uh, I, I've done it and I've never had issues and the current place I'm working at, I know that I'm gaining a lot from the mentor I have. Uh, there's ups and downs. Obviously, it's not perfect, yeah. but at least I know that like if I want to learn something or if I'm trying to learn something, I can reach out and ask him and not feel like uh, there's any lack of uh, communication or a uh, lack of education on that front. That's huge. Yeah, you got to be able to be able to talk with your mentor or just some a friend. Yeah, not thinking you know having to doubt your question or what you said or like. I don't want to bother this person. Did you work today? No. So today actually was not feeling well. I had I basically had a stomach virus, so I uh, had to talk to my guy I worked with, and he was okay with letting me take the time off. So that's another thing is you want to work with somebody that respects you and cares about your personal and mental health too. And that's a big factor I've been taking into account with places I work because mm. unfortunately that's another thing is a lot of uh, places don't factor that in. So um, that's for sure. Yeah, so. so sad, man. We we got to help people, and we can't even <clears throat> help ourselves. Yeah, no, and uh, that's uh, I did want to. I don't know if if we're running out of time, but I wanted to bring up that mission trip. If you're open to talking about that, absolutely, dude. However uh, much time we need, but, but okay. how, how many days do you, do you get? Off? Are you feeling better, by the way? I meant to ask. Yeah, yeah, I've been just resting today, so I've been good now. So much better. Oh. Thank you. Um, but yeah, no, I, uh, so I was in Austin. I didn't yeah. see you. You blew me off because you went to the VR to do a mission trip. This, I is, know. this is awesome though. I'm just kidding. You didn't blow me off. Thanks man. <laughs> yeah, no, I, uh, I am bummed. I didn't get to see you, but at least I had a good excuse for it. So, yeah. um, yeah. So just a brief kind of like intro to what I did. Um, the Dominican trip is run by an organization called Bright Island Outreach. They're an incredible, um, group that has been doing this for years. I first did it with them when I was in dental school in 2000. Oh, and that was my first experience with them. And then I connected with the leaders really well. They really wanted me to come back. Um, and I promised them I would come back at some point. And obviously years went by and I just couldn't do it. You know how life like with school yep. and work and everything, I just couldn't find the time to do it. And I was like, I promise I'm going to do it. I promise. And around that time in between, I started working with figs and I brought up with figs like, you know, don't worry about the photo shoots and all this stuff. But if I can do mission trips and you guys have any, I'm happy to do those. And they were like, OK, we'll put you down for that. And thankfully, I went to Kenya and did a mission trip with them. And it was great. It was the very first time they did one of those. And I tried to provide a lot of like input about like uh, mission trips and how they run from a dental perspective. And I took 
you know, my own dental tools. I brought my own instruments and all that stuff because they'd never kind of experienced this. And the foundation we worked with had never done it either. So I was kind of like spearheading by like uh, providing a little bit of input and whatnot. And they were pretty impressed by it and happy with like how it turned out. So they took into account like, hey, like, how did you know this? Like, where did you learn this from and all that? And I kind of provided the background of bio and how I learned a lot from them and how my experience was working with them. And because of that, Figs was like, okay, let's speak to bio. Like, let's, let's see like what we can do here. And I got bio connected with Figs and yeah, then we went and did this Dominican trip sponsored by Figs with uh, Bright Island Outreach. And it was incredible because it was like two people that are, are two groups that I really love and respect that I work with now doing something together. Mm. And it felt like a little brainchild that somehow came to fruition and i remember promising jonathan who's an owner of bio like hey i'm gonna manifest like us working with figs one day and so and it happened and it was just like yeah it was amazing so like i'm super grateful that we were able to make it happen um it was amazing like we saw uh i think at the end of the trip we saw like what patients and for three clinical days and the great thing about bright island mission trip is it's focused on kind of like you brought up earlier we're taking care of the patients while taking care of the dentist so while we're on that trip it's kind of like a retreat for dentists too where we get to do meditation yoga like we stay in kind of like a tree house in the middle of a jungle we have like our own personal beach cove it sounds like high class but it's 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 very bare bones like in terms of like making it very natural so we're eating healthy food every day they feed us like the most like quality, uh, you know, like straight out of the jungle food that we're eating every day. Like I was probably like most times when you go on vacation, you're like, I'm going to eat unhealthy now, you know, I'm on vacation, but like it was the opposite. I was like eating the most healthy I've ever eaten for those like five days there and felt amazing every day. I was waking up at seven doing yoga with the beach view with like an actual yoga instructor. It's actually dental yogis. I don't know if you know Dr. Uh, Christian. He's a dental yogi, but yes, yes, he he was he was there with us on the trip. So he was teaching yoga in the morning, meditation, and then we would go do our dental clinic uh, wow. round, and then we would do that, you know, for like five hours, and then we would go back to the uh, the treehouse resort place and all have dinner together, communal, and it was great. It was like one. I think that's something that a lot of mission trips are missing. I think unfortunately, when we go on mission trips. A lot of people don't want to go on them because you go, you work on people, you go back to like a shitty hotel and then you go back again in the morning and it, it wrecks your body. You know, it's not an easy thing oh. to work on lawn chairs. You're kind of working out of like no AC room. So it's like, mm-hmm. it's tough work and it's, it's incredible. I have so much respect for everyone that does it because you're putting yourself in such a physically demanding task, already doing a physically demanding profession. Yep. And uh, you're not expecting uh, anything, which sweaty, there's no air conditioning. Exactly. Maybe one fan for the whole building. Yeah. yeah. It's and, uh, I was just in Jamaica in October. I hear you. I didn't mean to cut you yeah. off, but dude, I, no, I hear you. You're right. And like I think that's why when people go on mission trips, I have such a high regard for them because it, it, you're you're sacrificing not only your money and your time, but your body to do this stuff to help people. And I think it's amazing. But Bright Island was like, hey, why don't we have that? But we also add the component to take care of our dentists. Like, you know, why don't we take care of their mental health? Why don't we give them the reinvigorating perspective on dentistry? And like, they can still help people. They can still create a long lasting impact, but we can also take care of their bodies and their minds and their souls outside of the mission part, which I think is great because not only are you now making mission trips like more desirable, you're making more people want to go on them because, you know, those same people that are like, no, I don't really do mission trips because I don't want to wreck my body. Those same people are like, oh, that actually sounds cool. Like I want to do a yoga retreat slash dental trip and get something out of it. And you get to meet other amazing dentists. And like we all sit in a communal lounge and we get to talk about our backgrounds and our professions. And it's kind of like you're having like a CE course at the same time too, because you're learning from each other. And I think Bright Island really nailed it on the head with like that kind of perspective. And Mm. Yeah, so that's why I really wanted to just hype them because I I really stand behind organizations and groups that do things like that. I'm not paid by them. I'm not like getting paid to promote them or anything. You know, with Figs too, like I work with them because I believe in like the the things they do for the community and the like. You know, not many companies pay for their ambassadors to go on a mission trip to take care of people, and mm-hmm. I think that's incredible because for the most part, like they always try to stand behind their word uh in terms of activism and funding and whatnot so 
Yeah. Yeah. Um, for Bright Island Outreach, I just wanted to say, like, if any of your listeners are interested in doing mission trips, you know, try, just dipping their toes in that and trying to see how they like it, that would be a good place to start. And you get that added component of just like renewing your perspective on dentistry and your mental health and all that other stuff. hundred percent, man. I commend you for doing that. And I, I appreciate Thanks, you man. bringing that up too, because it is so important. I found when I went to Jamaica back in October, just working on people that like with infections, teeth that needed to go out 10 Dude, years ago, it's they crazy. never would have gotten them out if you weren't there that day. Like yeah, you know, these, it's, these, down to emergencies, it never would have happened. I want to come in. I also want to highlight. So it was just, so mine was um, great shape. It's like a thousand mm-hmm. smiles project. Um, okay. was to make it. Yours was bright Island outreach. outreach. They go by bio, but bright Island outreach. And they, they take, um they do a lot of stuff they do yeah they do dominican because the leader uh started it but he's you know he's basically like the the figurehead in the dominican like he knows everyone he has the communal clinics all set up so he like really knows like the setup really well and i think for them the big thing is impact so they wanted to make this a continuous thing not just like we go help people and we leave and then that's it it's like no it's a continuous thing so when we leave another group will be there a month later to take care of the next set of patients like you know it's like a ongoing thing which i think is also important for these mission trips i think creating an impact is just as important as going to help these patients because nobody like i think about how sometimes we go and we do like a root canal and then we don't follow up with that patient Mm. so like did we really do anything for them you know we don't even know if that worked or like if that extraction now has an infection and so i think what's important is having an ongoing impact with the people you treat and so bio made that a very big part of their mission too is like we're going to make this a continuous care thing, but we're going to have people coming like on a continuous basis. And they even have local dentists who are part of this bio thing. So these local dentists, you know, they don't make as much as us. They, they make like, I remember I spoke to one dentist, like they make like $400 a month, dude. Like that's Mm -hmm. insane. Right. And they sacrifice their own personal time and money to go do these uh, trips and uh, volunteer, which I think is also incredible. Um, So yeah, shout out to anybody who does mission trips, whether or not it's a bio or any other organization. Like, I don't think people realize how much of a toll it takes on your mental and physical health to do these things, but everybody does it out of the pure uh, desire to just like help those in need. And I think it's incredible. And I'm hoping that bio and other organizations really inspire more to do this stuff, especially when you're in dental school and like you doing it in residency. Like, oral surgeons are more than like, the most highly desired people there, you know, like you guys, unfortunately we see patients that you can't save half of these teeth and you guys are like the number one people to be there to help treat that stuff on a good, like, um, like a fast basis. Like there's not a lot of dental students that can do like hardcore surgeries like you guys. So it's really appreciated that you guys do it as well. It was, it was pretty cool to see how how helpful you can be to a community that doesn't have access to such care and to get it so quickly and swiftly, you know, I also look, Let's, let's highlight some of the people that went with you too, because you know, shout out to them is, is great. You, yeah. you got to commend the people that, that do these things. It's very For hard sure. to break out of your shell on a daily basis. You know, say yeah. like, I'm going to take a week off or a weekend off from, you know, collecting a paycheck and to go and yeah. spend that money and more to go help a community. Like you said, you're taking a big toll on your body. I saw, so you said dental yoga. I saw Dentaro was there. Who else did I, did I see? On yeah. Um, Dentaro um, was awesome. Uh, Sean Land. You know, Sean, Sean. Oh, great he's, guy. I met him in my, He's my dude, bro. He's such a good guy. And he was he was our oral surgeon the whole time. So he was teaching okay. everyone. He was walking around guiding people. Nothing but the highest regard for that guy. We had a, a dentist named Anish. He's from California. Uh, we had a guy named Raj. He's also, uh, I believe he's in Atlanta. I hope I didn't get that wrong. Incredible dentist. Uh, we had Dr. Alia. Uh, she's in okay. Chicago. Uh, mm-hmm. We had Dr. Karina. She's in Miami, and uh, mm-hmm. I want to make sure we're not. We had uh, uh, Fiona. She's a uh, mouthbox. She's a hygienist. She came to do the, a lot of the hygiene. Oh, wow. Yeah, so we tried to get some hygiene involved in there too, which is really cool. She was super helpful with it. She was dealing with allergies the first couple of days. So shout out to her for like really chugging through with it. Um, that is tough too. I mean, yeah. how humid it is down there in the DR. You were in the jungle. Like that's yeah. not that's not yeah. easy. No, it's rough. It was thankfully the weather was like a little bit more accommodating this time. It wasn't as hot or humid, but um, yeah, shout out to like 
honestly, the guys that run bio, like Eric, Matt, Jonathan, um, Jonathan's wife, Deb, like they set up suction systems, which is incredible. I'm sure you know this, like there's no such thing as a suction when you're doing nope. these, right? So like to have suction while doing this work is like a godsend. And Matt literally went to like Home Depot and created his own suction system using PVC pipes and little pipettes and basically created his own like basically uh, I mean it's like a, a homemade suction system using a generator and a suctioning uh, vacuum like he created like you know you get those like uh, industry vacuums and yeah. he attached the PVC pipes to it uh, little filtration systems inside of it and it would filter out all the junk and yeah it was incredible to see and um yeah so shout out to matt for creating that That's but awesome. yeah th these are guys that take time out of their personal lives and their family lives to come to these trips too mm -hmm. um, on like a continual basis to to help the students and the dentists you know do this stuff so you know it's not only like shout out to the dentist but these are these like people that are not dentists that are taking time out of their personal jobs and lives to come do this stuff. And they've been, you know, the, these guys, it's like four dudes that started this organization together and have been doing it continually for years. And it's a nonprofit organization. So they're not doing it to make a buck, you know, like they're doing it because it's just a passion project that they love doing. And uh, I'm going to have Jonathan on my next week's episode podcast. So I'd love for you to listen to it. I think, you know, you would really love this guy, such a good guy. And he would love to be on your podcast at some point. One of the most passionate and compassionate individuals I've ever met who like loves the Dominican people so much that he created this organization to give back to the community. And he was a dentist and, you know, he gave up his dental career to go and do this and start this organization. So I think that's a something you know so commendable and um, not something many people do. Speaking of, do I have last in glass? Huh? Do I have last in glass? No, poquito. I only know the dental español. You know, like abre and uh, <laughs> yeah. So I just, uh, I'm, I honestly though, being on that trip, it really like made me think like I really need to start learning more. I think it's so important to know Spanish, especially in our field, and it, it, people love it. Like they're so thankful when you can speak to them. Yeah, and, man. Um, Dude, yeah. I did a whole consult in the media, in the media Tuesday night in, in yeah. Spanish. Like, dude, I, I'm coming it's, to the bar with you next time you yeah. go. You uh, go dude, like, they dude. would love to have you, and I'm going to connect you with Jonathan after this so you can talk to him because he would really love to have you on the trip. And yeah, you could man. teach people so much, man. You would have such a big impact, so it would be great. I also forgot to mention Dr. Joy. I don't want to make I want to make sure I didn't miss her. Um, she was also – she's from Houston. Uh, and she was another incredible dentist that took the time to come do this trip with us. I did see her too. Yeah. 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 Oh so. man. The Dominican Republic would be, would be awesome. I think my girlfriend. Yeah. And they had like, at the end of the day, wow. just like, I mean, I'd like enjoy it and not feel like they're going to do like, um, something so arduous as, at the same time because they want people to want to come back. So yeah, that's, oh man, I, I would love to have a little private beach. That's so cool. When, when we were in Jamaica, yeah. it, we, we stayed at a resort. But the resort had two sections. There was there was a big resort down on the beach, and they had to yeah. cross kind of like a highway thing that you get a shuttle and go up in like the hillside. Yeah, and we were all the way up in the hillside, and I, I'm not complaining. It was awesome. But yeah. but to wake up and be beachside is like it's that's a, you know, that's a little creepy. Was, but, all right, all right. Yeah, I mean it's just like it's interesting because you're just so, so not accustomed to that lifestyle. And like I looked up at night and you could see every star in the sky, and it's such a beautiful thing. And um, just to get back in touch with nature in that regard, too, is so nice because it's, it's, I think it's something we take for granted when we live in this world. And just to step away from it for a bit and not hear the cars and the highway when you're, like, you know, waking up every day is nice. And you you know that. You live in the most uh, concrete jungle of them all. So, yeah, it's, a, it's hard to get away from that noise sometimes. So when you do, it's, a, it's like almost, like, startling for the first day or two. You know, um, I, and I live across the street from three hospitals, so about every thirty seconds, another there's ambulance. An ambulance. Yeah, I can imagine. But, but dude, yeah, so just to wrap this up, so tell me what the next steps are. How how are you doing? Like you, you know. I appreciate that, man. It's uh, that's what I loved about our conversations. We used to always talk about like mental health and stuff, and like that's why Sean and I are really close friends because our first conversation we just talked about how we were doing mentally and i think as guys it's such a hard conversation to have sometimes or it's like a hard thing to break through but uh yeah man i'm doing great thankfully i think like this trip really reinvigorated me gives you more perspective and purpose in life makes you really 
appreciate what you do when you see like the impact you have on people like that who don't get to see you their whole lives. And, um, you know, unfortunately we live in a place where some people take us for granted and you get used to people yelling at you and blaming you for their dental issues. So that can kind of take a toll on your mental health over time too. Oh. Um, so when you go on these trips, you kind of realize like what you do does make a difference and it does matter and it is important. And uh, it really makes me appreciate how lucky I am to be in this profession. And then to talk to people like you makes me additionally be grateful for just having such incredible peers around me that I can turn to and talk to and do things like this. You know, I'm like, I still am in imposter mode where I'm like, I don't even know why I'm on this podcast. Like it's an honor to be here on talking to you, but it's, it's appreciated that you, <laughs> that you take the time to talk and you know, that you actually care about my input and whatnot, because I think that's like the most, that's the best part of this field is you can learn more from like your peers than you can from half these CE courses, because we just all have like such incredible experiences in our own little dental world. And so, yeah, man, I'm doing great. That, that being said, and, uh, I'm, uh, very thankful for most things in life and uh, just trying to work towards, you know, growing and being better this year. This The main goal this year is to just take the ne next leap of faith, which is uh, practice ownership. And uh, hopefully the next time we do this episode, I'll be giving input on the challenges I faced and the unique approach I took to it. So we'll keep, That's keep right. that in mind. Let's and manifest that on this podcast. 100%, 100%. And I got to connect you with Ben Kim. He just started his practice up. Yeah, I talk to Ben every now and then. He's a uh, yeah, he's in Dallas right now, and he's he's killing it. I right, think uh, right. he's a great guy. He's a very motivated, dude. Yeah, yeah, and and you know, you guys could bounce ideas off it because he just started what nine months ago, and yeah. dude, I want to see you take that step. You got to just I know you need I will. I want to see your office reflect you in it, and then every day yeah. you go in the office, it's just going to your second home, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I definitely. I'm looking forward to that and hopefully it'll be a pretty dope office that I could show you and be like, yeah, check out all this, like this vinyl player at the front and all this stuff. So yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll be in touch about it. But yeah, man, if you ever want to come uh, do some oral surgery in my office and, you know, be our like resident oral surgeon, that'd be amazing too. Now we got some ideas. A little yeah. mission trip to the DR, stop by Austin Tech. Yeah, uh, the, the mission trip yeah. in the DR, by the way, he does a lot of implant stuff too. They do implant programs and, um, you know, uh, yeah. surgical CE stuff. So if you want to get involved in that regard too, we'll definitely connect you and get that on the front. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. Just but, uh, one last word, dude. I, I, I know, you know, we, like you said, we do talk about mental health and a lot and stuff. And, yeah. you know, our days, they're not easy. You to stomach bug earlier today i was in the or for 12 hours like it's yeah. not easy to do this stuff but in one way or another i go like this is this is my therapy in a way you know to connect with yeah. such good people with you and you know we could talk about making the world a little bit better place one day yeah. at a time you know and so for i appreciate sure. you being able to take the time to come on yeah man thanks for having me on it's been an honor and uh hopefully we'll get to do this again and uh, i can't wait to have you on my podcast i told you i like to do them in person so hopefully yes. we'll have to make a trip soon and we'll plan it out Yes, we will. That'll be part uh, two. Part two yeah, will be. If you don't mind, I uh, I also wanted to check how you're doing. You're doing okay. I feel like you do these podcasts, but you know you deserve to get some questions thrown your way too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's uh, you know, a lot going on behind the cameras, and uh, that's that's really my kind of escaping to kind of cope and just to yeah. kind of connect with people outside of the profession when you're doing. 12, 13, 15 hour days. Yeah, you know, you know, being surrounded by all This is, this is your way of uh, decompressing them. Yeah, and to, exactly, to, to, to record, to connect with good people and, you know, to learn from you, like you said, share ideas, have a good conversation that's not 100% yeah. dentistry. We get to talk about, you know, books and music and, you know, what's your favorite, but what's, what's a good self help tip? Yeah, it's, no, there's, there's been a lot going on. I just need residency to finish and just to kind of get out. You know how you were saying, like, you got to leave a practice sometimes where you just don't. Well, I'm not saying, say, residency is this or that. Yeah. But what I am saying is I, I, I'm really looking forward to, to starting that next chapter so that. Yeah, for sure. In my own space, in my own time, in my own house or wherever it may be, because I really do want to come to Austin, right? Yeah. Want, it's, it's like you got to make time for things. And yeah. for me, it's like making time is like opening up the laptop and it's something. And this is gold to me. I want to yeah. be able to come visit you, though. I want to go to the DR when we can. Yeah, I, I've been dating my my girlfriend's from the DR. We've oh, been nice. dating 
three and a half years now, and I still haven't been to the DR because Dude. when we started dating, I went right into residency. And yeah. so, I mean, I get it, man. I mean, but, like, I mean the, the good thing is you have these goals in mind. I think some people get so lost in that comfort or that like nine to five mentality that you don't even think like what you're going to do in the next year or two. Like you just kind of think like in the now, like this is what I'm doing. This is what I have to do. This is what I'm doing tomorrow. And so I think the most important thing is to set these goals and be very digital, right. diligent about it. Be like, okay, next year I'm going to Japan no matter what. Like that's kind of what I did with like these trips and like, some people look at my stuff and they're like, where do you find the time to travel? And it's like, well, I, I made the time. Like I, there's, if I don't do it now, I'm not going to do it ever. So like if I can take a week off to go to Copenhagen or if I can take time off to go here or there, it's like it it makes a significant difference, not only on mental health, but at least I can look back and say like I, I did what I promised I was going to do to myself. So I'm glad that you're doing that, man. And I think you're going to do incredible stuff professionally. But uh, personally, I, I, I think you're going to do awesome too. So I'm excited that, you know, you, you're you happy about the Dominican thing. And now that you have a girlfriend that's Dominican, I think you're obligated to make this trip with us now to give back to her her friends and family too. So, yeah, we'll uh, we'll plan it out, man. And, uh, yeah, again, it's been an honor being your friend and being on this podcast. So I appreciate it, man. Dude, this is just part one, man. We'll have a part two soon. Yeah, appreciate it, man. All right, brother. We'll talk soon, all right? I appreciate all right. those kind words. Take care, bro. All right, man. Bye.